Hi, my name is Deacon Jim, and this is St. Bernadette in South Los Angeles. Today is San Saturday, January 29th. Oh my goodness, didn't, didn't 2021 just end? And here we are all the way through the first month of 2022. Good, goodness, goodness gracious, time flies when you're having fun. Um, I, somebody called me out yesterday because I mentioned Thomas Aquinas, but I didn't read his bio at the service. So let me do that right now. Uh, this is yesterday's saint of the day, St. Thomas Aquinas, priest and doctor of the church. Thomas was born about 1225 of the house of the Counts of Aquino. So he was actually royalty. He studied first at the monastery of Monte Cassino, then at Naples. Later, after joining the order of preachers, he completed his studies in Paris and Cologne under the guidance of St. Albert the Great. Saints seem to begat saints, don't they? He taught, wrote learned books, and contributed in an outstanding way to the philosophy and theology of the Catholic Church. He died near Teresina on March 7, 1274. His feast is celebrated on January 28th, which was yesterday, on which his body was, the date in which his body was transferred to Toulouse, in 1369. So St. Thomas Aquinas, sorry St. Thomas for not completing that yesterday, but we completed it today. So let us begin today, as we always begin, we don't have a saint today, so I would not have done that if it hadn't been that. But let us begin as we always begin in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, as we begin our celebration, let us praise our merciful God. Lord Jesus, you came to seek out those who were lost. Lord, have mercy. You came to give your life for the sake of all. Christ, have mercy. You came to gather into one family your scattered children. Lord, have mercy. And let us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And let us come together as we break open the scripture. The Lord sent Nathan to David, and when he came to him, Nathan said, Judge this case for me. In a certain town, there were two men, one rich, the other poor. The rich man had flocks and herds in great numbers. But the poor man had nothing at all, except one little ewe lamb that he had bought. He nourished her, and she grew up with him and his children. She shared the little food he had, and drank from his cup, and slept in his bosom. She was like a daughter to him. Now the rich man received a visitor but he would not take from his own flock and herds to prepare a meal for the wayfarer who had come to him. Instead, he took the poor man's ewe lamb and made a meal of it for his visitor. David grew very angry with that man and said to him, As the Lord lives, the man who has done this merits death. He shall restore the ewe lamb fourfold, because he has done this and has had no pity. Then Nathan said to David, you are that man. Thus says the Lord God of Israel, the sword shall never depart from your house because you have despised me and have taken the wife of Uriah to be your wife. Thus says the Lord, I will bring evil upon you out of your own house. I will take your wives while you live to see it and I will give them to your neighbor. He shall lie with your wives in broad daylight. You have done this deed in secret, but I will bring it about in the presence of all Israel and with the sun looking down upon it. And David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. Nathan answered David, The Lord on his part has forgiven your sin. You shall not die. But since you have utterly spurned the Lord by this deed, the child born to you must surely die. Then Nathan returned to his house. The Lord struck the child that the wife of Uriah had borne to David, and it became desperately ill. David besought God for the child. He kept a fast, retiring for the night, 
to lie on the ground clothed in sackcloth. The elders of his house stood beside him, urging him to rise from the ground, but he would not, nor would he take food with them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Create a clean heart for me, O Lord. A clean heart create for me, O God, and a steadfast spirit renew within me. Cast me not out from your presence, and your Holy Spirit take not from me. Create a clean heart in me, O Lord. Give me back the joy of your salvation, and a willing spirit sustain in me. I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners shall return to you. Create a clean heart in me, O God. Free me from the blood guilt, O God, my saving God. Then my tongue shall revel in your justice. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Create a clean heart in me, O God. Alleluia, alleluia. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whomsoever shall believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Alleluia, alleluia. A reading, the Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. On that day, as evening drew on, Jesus said to his disciples, Let us cross to the other side. Leaving the crowd, Jesus, they took Jesus with them in the boat, just as he was. And other boats were with him. A violent squall came up, and waves were breaking over the boat, so that it was already filling up. Jesus was in the stern, asleep on a cushion. They woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up, rebuked the wind, and said to the sea, Quiet, be still. The wind ceased, and there was great calm. Then he asked them, Why are you terrified? Do you not yet have faith? They were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this, whom even the wind and the sea obey? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Whew. Whoa, love that story, right? You can just under see Jesus so calm. Be quiet. What was wrong? Why, why were you worried? Um, we... Probably, though, even though I, you know, there's, there was, remember the, the what me worry? Remember the guy from Mad Magazine that always had the what me worry? He must have been a Christian. Why worry if you have Jesus? But I think we could probably relate. And it, one of the things they do in Bible study, it's always they ask you this question is to relate to somebody in the, in, in the story. Who do you relate with? And typically, we, we usually relate with everybody but Jesus, right? It's nice if we can relate to Jesus, but quite often we end up relating to everybody else. And how many times in our lives have there been storms? I mean, like within the last 48 hours even, you know? We have these constant storms in our lives, whatever they may be, whether they be, you know, a bill we missed or, or uh, something that happened on the 405 freeway, God help us, or, or you know, all these different storms that we have in our life as my grandmother used to refer to them when I would get stressed over things like that as tempests in a teapot. And that's probably a really good image to think of for God because, or for Jesus because the things that are tempestuous in our lives are truly tempests in a teapot for him. They are no big deal. So here we have this example today with the, you know, the, the storm on the Sea of Galilee, and they're, they're worried about they're going to die, and all of this, we're going to die, we're going to die, and they come, don't you care that, you know, we're all going to die? And he goes, eh, tempest in a teapot. Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? How many times have we said that? It is easy to question God when we experience loss, disappointment, illness, or what we perceive as disaster. Sometimes the disasters are real too. 
We might even ask, don't you care, God, that I'm suffering? Don't you care what happens to me? Why would you let this happen? How many times have we said that to God? Why, are you letting, why would you let this happen? How can this happen? How can this happen to me? How many times do we ask those kinds of questions? And we often turn to that, you know, then we turn to the cliche. Well, huh, everything happens for a reason. Oh, goodness, right? Everything happens for a reason, which initially sounds nice. But actually, it assumes that God would somehow will evil in the world. Yeah. It, 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 you know, everything happens for a reason. Well, does it? You know, does God create disasters in our lives? Um, perhaps we should strive, rather than to see the evils in our lives, to look for the instances of good that they present themselves to. You know, which, which side of the coin are you looking at? You know, are you looking at, are you looking at the bright side? How, remember that expression, look on the bright side? How many times have you heard that? Look on the bright side. We never say to you, stop looking at the dark side. Quit looking at the dark side. Start looking at the bright side. There are shimmering beams of light among the darkness. And the light looks brighter when there's darkness, doesn't it? Doesn't it? You know, that one beacon, beacon out in a dark room or something, it looks brighter. And it is. Although we cannot understand the sudden loss, maybe, of a friend or why a family member was diagnosed with a terminal illness, or why our parents are separating, or we can, you know, we look at all of these things, or why I, why I lost my job, or why is this pandemic here? That's all God's fault, right? Maybe God's trying to teach us something. We come, we come up with all of this stuff. But we can still look for God's presence in and among these situations. Isn't it strange at times like this that more people come back to the church? When people realize they're not in control, that's when they come back to the church. As long as they feel like they're in control, they don't need God. You know, as long, so, right? So the, the disciples, when they're in control, they're fishermen. They know how to handle a boat. But when they're not in control, when that storm comes, that's when they run to God, Jesus. That's when they come to him and say, do something about this. Shouldn't we let the light of Christ in our life at all times? Not just when things get crazy or difficult or scary. We should allow God in our lives at all times. We still much look for God's presence in all situations. Not just the good, not just the bad. We must name also for ourselves what's hurting us. What is the pain? What is the loss that we experienced in these situations? You know, how many times have we realized that after a while of, of fretting about something that we were worrying about the wrong thing or we were grieving over the wrong thing or whatever? You know, it's important that we look inwardly to see and name those things that are hurting us, those things that are causing us pain, and those things that we seem to have lost in difficult situations. Sometimes losing stuff, losing baggage isn't a bad thing. However, these times and other times when this happens is an invitation to notice and name God's abiding presence. So maybe, my brothers and sisters, whenever we have those storms, whenever we're on the Sea of Galilee and it's not placid, and we're having those storms ourselves in our own personal life, realize that those are opportunity for us to find God to name God in those situations, to realize his presence and love. Because after all, my brothers and sisters, he's always there. Sometimes it takes difficulty, though, for us to realize it. Amen. Jesus prayed that all may be one as you, Father, and I are one. Bringing our hopes and prayers for the church, we pray. That the gospel of Christ may be the center of our life together as church and community. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all churches and faith communities 
may, be, may find unity in the gospel of the risen Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Pope Francis, our bishop, and all ministers of the church may be compassionate fishers of souls for God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the nations and people of the world may live in peace, working together to protect the dignity and rights of all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who walk in dark, the darkness of illness and addiction and abuse may see the great light of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died, that they may dwell forever in the house of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the prayers we hold in the silence of our own hearts. We pray to the Lord. God of mercy and compassion, we ask you to hear our prayers and our intercessions. Amen. And let us come together and pray the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, and deliver us from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. O God, who have willed that we be partakers in one bread and one chalice, grant us, we pray, so to live that, made one in Christ, we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. My brothers and sisters, go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Happy Saturday. Have a great Saturday. We'll see you in church maybe tonight, maybe tomorrow. Have a good day and a good weekend. Amen.